So, you want to write some scary stories? Let's talk about what makes a book scary and what works best for horror authors. <laughs> Horror is really an art form when on the printed page. Us novel writers are up to a higher challenge than most other mediums. Video games put you in the character, and you can trick players into thinking that they are actually in danger and elicit real terror. Movies have the crutch of a visual medium, as well as sound, to create fear. Your movie can be poorly written, but with a few good jump scares, you can combine a sudden sight and a loud noise into a great moment of fear. <laughs> Though a cheap shot, to say the least. Book writers have it the hardest. We don't have the crutch of a creepy soundtrack or immersive gameplay or an entity that is scary to look at on screen. We have to entirely rely on the words on the page to scare our readers, which is why horror can be one of the greatest and hardest forms for books specifically. So in writing, what are the best ways to create fear? Fear is a primitive reaction, feelings that are ingrained into our very survival. Our minds are trained to fight or flight from certain scenarios whether we like it or not because that is what made our ancestors survive. Most stories rely on these primitive reflexes to scare the reader, or at least set the scene and make the reader more uncomfortable. Perhaps easier than thinking, what is scary, think of what makes us feel safe, then take that away. For instance, we practice safety in numbers. Being surrounded by people gives us a sense of security. That's why most horror stories immediately open up with the main character or characters being put in a position of solitude. The lakeside house in the middle of the woods with no phone, space, in a basement, we feel weaker when we are alone because we are. Most horror books put us in that position right away. If our hero can't cry for help, then they must fend for themselves. Next, there's obviously light. Humans have been trying to light up the darkness for centuries. Take that away and we are suddenly thrust into the unknown. The ancient humans knew that the daytime was safe, the fire was safe, but in the shadows lurked creatures that can see us without us seeing them, hunting us. When we are in the dark, our primal brain goes into panic mode and thinks that we are being stalked. Clearly why most horror stories make it dark. The list of things writers use to create fear go on and on. Looking up any major phobia will be a good idea to elicit terror. Heights, pain, death, the afterlife, strangers. And be sure to pick and choose carefully because too many horror tropes at once can make the plot seem overdone. The major fear you want to focus on, though, is the unknown. Humans like knowing things. Knowledge makes us comfortable. When we are confronted with a being or power that escapes our understanding or reason, we become afraid of it. If we do not know what it can do, then we fear it can do anything. H.P. Lovecraft said it best, The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. The oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. Most monsters or ghost movies use the fear of the unknown, or at least they start that way. The characters are up against something they have never seen before, and then, when the characters figure out the weakness or origin of the being, once they actually understand it, it is no longer unknown, and it's no longer scary, then it's defeated. If there is a story where the characters never figure out what they are up against, assume there's going to be a sequel. Now we need to go beyond creating just a scary setting. In writing on the page alone, we need to be on the next level with our work, because books are at a horror disadvantage. The most direct way for a reader to experience fear is by having them connect with the main character. As we went over in previous episodes, the main character is a stand-in for the reader. Take time at the beginning of your book to have the audience connect and relate to the main character before throwing them to the wolves. The reader will care for them and relate to them, and then when you put that character in a scary place with a scary monster, the reader will think, oh my god, what if that was me? And then they start feeling personal fear, rather than thinking, huh, must suck to be them. Stephen King, the master of writing horror, goes even further and defines terror in three different styles. The gross out, the sight of a severed head tumbling down a flight of stairs, is when the lights go out and something green and slimy splatters against your arm. The horror, the unnatural, spiders the size of bears, the dead waking up and walking around. It's when the lights go out and something with claws grabs you by the arm. And the last and worst one, terror, when you come home and notice everything you own has been taken away and replaced by an exact substitute. So when the lights go out and you feel something behind you, you hear it, you feel its breath against your ear, but when you turn around, there's nothing there. The point he's making is, all three are viable, but some of them are easier to pull off. Anyone can describe something gross, or a detail, something unnatural, but the real terror is something that we don't understand, a force we can't wrap our minds around, but are forced to combat with. You can use all three types, but terror and use of the unknown are the most powerful, while being the most challenging to write. 
Great horror is also about knowing how to build suspense, create the anticipation of fear, rather than just the scary thing happening. Listening to a person getting killed is scary, it can even be gruesome, but it's more effective when you relate to the character and some suspense is built. Let's say you're a prisoner in a cell, wrongfully accused of course because you're relatable, and you can hear a guard who has lost his mind going cell by cell, opening up and murdering the other inmates. You can hear it. You can hear their struggles their last breaths and their attempts to fight back, then the silence as he moves calmly to unlock the next cell and start over. You are locked in your cell. No escape. There is nothing you can do. Isolated. The longer you wait, the closer he gets. Then he's in the cell next to yours, killing your friend. He cries for help, but no one answers. Then the footsteps as he approaches your cell and you hear the keys rattling. That's suspense. Think of the elements of terror as additions to a scary story and suspense as the multiplier. Use them together to be as effective as possible. Keep in mind, you can create these fears figuratively, rather than literally, for added effect and skill. For instance, you can create a sense of isolation without actually being isolated. It's easy to make a character feel isolated when they are literally trapped in a basement, but a more advanced method is you are surrounded by people, maybe hundreds, who don't seem to notice or care about your suffering, and your cries fall on deaf ears. An example of this is the nobody believes you method, where the characters are figuratively isolated from the rest of the world because no one will believe them. This can also be done with the everyone was in on it, and the isolation is accomplished by not being a part of the cult from the start. All methods of terror can really be done figuratively, you just need to think outside the box, oh, what's in the box and try to interpret these fears in new ways. This will really make your writing shine. It also tends to haunt the reader more. We're writers. Be creative. That's all we have here for today. And remember, horror belongs to everyone. Happy Halloween!